Hey there, welcome to Western Plan Explorers. My name is Julian Lawrence, and we have come to Whipple Creek Regional Park in southwestern Washington State to see something that you don't usually see in this region, Grand Fir Forest. With the arrival of the European-American culture in the Pacific Northwest in the late 18th century, much of the area was logged over. The forest which grew back consisted mostly of Douglas fir and big leaf maple, but here in Whipple Creek Park we have Grand Fir and Western Red Cedar. Grand Fir grows in two separate populations, one east of the Cascade Mountains and one west. To the south in California, they mix and hybridize with white fir. Though widespread in mixed species forests in the west, it is unusual to find a solid block of grand fir forest. The tallest grand firs grow in the Olympic Mountains of Washington, with a record tree topping 267 feet. Grand fir was introduced to science by Scottish botanist David Douglas. Enamored by its immense size, he called it the grand fir. Trees with 5 foot diameter trunks and more than 200 feet tall can still be found today. The easiest way to identify a grand fir when you have the foliage in your hand is to look at the needles. You can see that they have a ridge running across the top of them, and each alternating needle is of a separate length. If you flip the needles over, they have a distinct white stripe underneath. This is the way to differentiate a grand fir from, say, a silver fir or a noble fir, and it is distinctly different from Douglas fir. Side by side, you can see that a grand fir and Douglas fir twig are much different. The needles on the Douglas fir sprout out all around the twig, while on the grand fir they're held out horizontally. Douglas fir bark is what we see a lot in this area. You can see it has very deep furrows throughout all the way up. This bark is extremely thick and very fire resistant. As we move over to grand fir bark, you notice that it has these two to three inch long blocks on it. The bark is actually much thinner than Douglas fir bark and much less resistant to fire, meaning that grand fir is more susceptible to being killed by surface fires. So you see, we have the deep furrowed bark of the Douglas fir extending far up the trunk. And now we'll come over to the grand fir with its smooth bark up to the top. And as we come down to the blocks and ridges Trees and other plants are living cellular organisms like us. Though they don't move or talk out loud, they remind me that sometimes I move too much. I talk too much. It takes maturity to engage in the quiet of a forest. The cones of grand firs and all true firs are way up in the top of the tree to keep their nutritious seeds away from critters that might want to eat them. The cones don't actually fall down unless they're blown down by a windstorm. Instead, the cones just disintegrate in the top of the tree and the seeds fall out in the wind. Of Pacific Northwest conifers, only Douglas fir grows faster, but grand firs have a live fast, die young strategy. They do not develop resistance to fungal pathogens and so are often infected with heart rot which limits their lifespan to around 250 years, rather short compared to its companions Douglas fir and western red cedar, which can live over 1,000 years. We hope you've enjoyed our look at the grand firs of Whipple Creek Regional Park. For Western Plant Explorers, I'm Julian Lawrence. Thanks for watching.